Hi, everyone. Hi, we've got Bronte Barrett with us today, Olympic gold medalist and recently retired swimmer um, after Rio last year. Um, yeah, and thanks for having, thanks for talking to us today, Bronte. Really appreciate your time and um, hope you're well. No worries. I'm happy to be um, chatting to you about transitioning today. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Uh, obviously, it's it's definitely a topic that's gained um, and so so gained a lot more sort of public recognition of late. So we definitely appreciate you taking your time to sort of tell your story and your experiences. Um, with your recent transition, obviously, you're still sort of pretty fresh um, from retiring. I mean, less than twelve months since Rio, still. So it'd be good to get your perspective on things um, of where you've been at. Um, I guess what we're trying to look we'll look to do is. Um, is trying to figure out what what lessons you've learned and how you how other athletes can can potentially learn off what you've done and things that have worked for you, things that you maybe could have done better whilst you were still swimming and um, yeah. So I guess the first question is like what uh, what skills did you learn from your sport that have transferred to your your post sporting career? Um, so I'm actually um, in the process of writing up a few resumes for grad jobs next year. Um, so it's pretty fresh in my mind and all the stuff that I'm writing down I do genuinely believe um, so I guess yep. you know all the kind of standard things like you know, determination and work ethic and discipline I think sport teaches you from a young age um, which I think is definitely transferable into the workplace um, and then also I think competitiveness I think um, you know you can't underestimate that in a workplace because um, I think straight away you have a bit of an edge on other people only because that's what you do as an athlete in your day-to-day -day life. You know, you want to win, you want to be better. Um, and I think, you know, that does give you a real edge um, out in the real world. Um, another thing that I've found and that I've sort of spoken about um, to people is resilience. Um, no one really seems to have a, real, a completely smooth um sporting career I think everyone goes through setbacks and um, yeah. you know being being quite young and as an athlete you go through them quite young in life um, and I think that also sets you up um, for a really good future in the workplace um, another big thing is punctuality um, you know just the fact that you yeah. have to get to training early in the morning um, for 15 years it really sets you up as being a morning person and I think that that's definitely transferable into the workplace as well. Um, and then I think this is one of the big things. I think, you know, because as an athlete you, you have your career and then you go into another career afterwards, you're probably finishing uni and looking for jobs a little bit later than than most people. And so I think just generally the life experiences that you have give you better communication skills and a bit more maturity you know, if you're going up against someone who's probably just had the, the same path of finishing school, going to uni and finishing uni at 20, 21 and then going straight into the workplace, naturally if you're 27, 28 going into the workplace, you're just going to have a bit more, um, you know, maturity and a bit more um, life under your belt and I think that, that will shine through as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because a lot of the concerns that we hear from other athletes are that they don't feel like, they feel like they're behind the eight ball a bit but you've kind of spun it around there and sort of almost said that, that it should be used towards and that you're entering the workforce a bit later is should actually be seen as an advantage given your past experience in sport and not that you're not necessarily starting from scratch or that you're not um, any less prepared or, or whatever than other, than say the 21, 22 year old graduate and it's a, it's a pretty good point. Um, and, and one that probably athletes don't they probably think about the negatives associated with that as as the, as the positives which you've just mentioned there and I guess in a sport like swimming in particular where you are like from such a young age so committed you know it, it's it's kind of a young sport in regards to you know athletes can be at the top before they've even finished high school and all that sort of stuff so it, you definitely have uh, that that commitment and resilience from a, a pretty young age just even compared to to other sports but yeah no no yeah. It's, some, some good points there and, and definitely something that, that other athletes can, can use. Um, yeah, and it's definitely like that I, it's not like that, um, that's sort of taken me a while to realise as well. It's not like, I think, you know, definitely in other areas you might be behind the eight ball, but um, I think you have to focus on the positives because otherwise it'll just get you down in the dump. So 
um, yeah, yeah. it's taken me a little bit after swimming to realize that that actually is a positive factor. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that yeah, straight away it might seem like you're behind and, and things like that. But um, in the long run, I know that I'd prefer to have the experiences that I had through sport um, rather than just taking the standard route through school and uni and getting a job and, and that kind of thing. Absolutely. And, and what has worked best for you during retirement? Like what's had the biggest positive effect on your life? And conversely, what have you found most difficult about retirement? Um, I think, I mean, for me, I was lucky enough to um, secure an internship at EY um, straight after yep. the Olympics when I retired. Um, so that started in about two months after the Olympics. And I think that was really the best thing that could have happened in terms of finishing sport and going into the next chapter of my life, only because it just kept me busy um, yeah. and really didn't have time to dwell on the fact that, oh, oh my God, I have to start this whole new life and stress about it. I just had to sort of get up every day and go to work and um, meet new people and make new skills and, and things like that. So it was really tough, but I think that has ended up being, um, you know, probably the most um, beneficial thing in my transition. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, yeah, I think also probably the biggest positive like influence has been um, my family and my friends outside of the sport. Um, they've kept me really grounded and... Um, I mean, I've always been really lucky to have that throughout my career, but I think I've had to lean on them a fair bit more now that I don't have my support network of all the, the swimming people around me. Um, so yep. that's been a really big um, positive influence. And also sort of um, my own, um, I think I was quite aware that I'd be going back down to the bottom in terms of my next career. Um, and I don't know whether everybody does like you sort of have to give away some of your pride maybe that you've built up throughout your career and you know you, you're the yeah, best sure. at something and suddenly you go back and you're definitely not the best at anything anymore. Um, yeah. So I think you kind of have to just sort of get over that, um, you know, being proud and not, not willing to sort of go back down to the bottom. And I, I realised that and I think that was a really helpful thing in my transition as well. Yep. Um, so that's been all the good stuff. And then... Yeah. Um, I have found it a little bit difficult in retirement. Not really because I'm really lucky I got to finish my career exactly how I wanted. So I don't have any regrets yeah, and I think that has helped me move on. Um, but I think the most difficult thing is being probably just um, missing seeing my friends every day and seeing my coach every day and and um, that kind of thing, I guess. And yeah, like I said, that support network that you usually have um, every day when you're an athlete is not there anymore. Um, so that's a little bit hard to get used to, but I'm like, yeah, lucky that I had my family and my other friends and they're my support network now. With hindsight, was there anything you wished you had done during your, your swimming days to better prepare for your transition? Well, I think generally I... I mean, I, I always did uni. So I, I, I mean, it, I changed courses a few times, which is a bit frustrating because if I sort of pick something that I liked a lot, you know, um, like straight out of school, I definitely would have finished it by now. Um, but I guess it probably wasn't a bad thing that I did a few things and didn't like them. So now that I sort of know that I like what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But I don't know, I think it didn't, I didn't really, um, I think like I wish I'd legitimately checked out career paths earlier in my career, like actually going into a business or going into somewhere else and watching what they do for the day and things like that, like a more practical approach because I didn't do that until 2012. Um, so I finished yep. school in 2006 and so I didn't, in, not until 2012 when I had a bit of a freak out after the Olympics then, yeah. being like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Um, but I yeah. finally listened to my mum um, and she was like, can you just come in for a day at the hospital and just like follow around some radiographers and just see what they do and see whether you'd be interested in that. Um, so I did that and I, and I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. So yeah, and yeah. I didn't, wouldn't have got that unless I went in and actually saw what they did for the day. So I think trying to line up a few more actually, yeah, like really practical and legitimate career options, not just sort of oh, I like studying this or I enjoy learning about this because that's not really realistic. Um, like at, at what stage during uh, their sporting career do you think athletes should start preparing for life after sport? Do you think it's possible to build identity outside of sport whilst you're still 
competing? Um, and if so, like, how do you think they can do that? Do that better. Um, I mean, I think everyone should sort of be constantly sort of preparing um, for life after sport. You know, I don't know simultaneously to competing and. I think, I mean, that's easier said than done. And I definitely, you know, deferred a few semesters here and there from uni. And it's a really, um, it is really tough because we go away so much during the year. It's really hard to, you know, you miss five, six weeks of uni. It's pretty hard to catch up on. And, um, yeah, that was always really tough for me. Um, but I, I'm really happy and I'm really proud of myself that I still chipped away at it every semester. Um, you know, sometimes it was only doing one subject, sometimes two um, and things like that because it, it really does make a big difference when you stop um, and I've sort of only had about a year of lag where I've sort of gone back and had to finish off uni. Um, yeah. Some people have to start completely fresh which would be so overwhelming. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, it's easy, easy for me to say but um, yeah, I think it really is important to do it while you're competing and, and like we said earlier, it's hard because swimming is such a young sport. Like I made my first Australian team when I was 16 um, yeah. And, you know, when you're 16 and you suddenly sort of make a, an open team and you get through to 2021 20, and you think, oh, well, I don't really have to do anything else. Um, you've got a little bit more money probably than your friends and um, at that stage. And then, but realistically, swimming and other sports, you only have a certain amount of time where your body can perform at that level. Um, yeah. And it's going to end eventually. Um, so, yeah, I think it is really important to do that while you're swimming. Um, I mean, at the yeah. same time, though, I think while you're swimming or doing another sport professionally, you have to give that everything as well because that's what you're doing and you want to be as successful and have no regrets in that field. So, But I think it is possible to do both. Do you think it's possible to build identity out of sport whilst you're still competing as well? So as in finding something which does have just as much, well, maybe not, obviously we don't say just as much because, as you mentioned, like, whilst you're being an athlete, you definitely want to want that to be, you know, a main source of your identity. But do you think it's possible to build that identity outside of sport whilst you're still swimming or competing? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, I guess that, I think that kind of goes back to um, what I said before about keeping um, friends and, and stuff outside of your sport so you're not just known as a swimmer or... Because um, then, yeah, when you finish, then you just sort of lose your identity. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's tough to completely build a career like outside of your sport while you're in it. Um, but I think yeah. as long as you're putting steps in place that you don't have too long between, then you definitely can do that. And, yeah, I don't know. I think definitely... Um, yeah, having a lot of contacts and friends outside of your sport is really healthy. And then I think, yeah, you definitely can build an identity outside of your sport while you're still doing your sport. And how um, how important is it to you to invest in finding the right career path, one that suits you and one that you're excited about? Um, I think it's really important. Um, and, you know, I still find it hard only because, like, obviously when you're in a sport and, you know, I was so passionate about swimming and I loved it. Um, it's really hard to find something else similar and realistically probably won't find anything else really similar. Um, so I think it's just going to take time and I don't think you can force the situation. Um, so I don't know, for me at the moment, I'm happy finishing off um, study and working towards having a profession um, so that I can you know, have a legitimate job while I find something else that I'm really passionate about and I think that's just realistic. Um, you know, I think I love swimming and I, I still want to be involved in swimming as much as I can and I think that's what sort of helped me a lot as well. I haven't just completely walked away from the sport. I'm still quite involved, um, you know, with the Australian Swimmers Association and I'm still in contact with a lot of swimmers and um, that has helped me transition, I think, because I haven't just, you know, shut that door and moved on and not had anything to do with swimming anymore. I still love it and I still want to be involved. So, um, yeah, so that's keeps me excited about swimming still, even though I'm not in the sport, which I think is good. Because, um, yeah, I don't know whether I will find something that is as exciting as swimming, but, um, yeah, cool. yeah, I'm sort of doing stuff in the meantime um, so that I can maybe find something else. But what are you What are you doing now? What sort of athletes do you think would be suited to your your role or industry that you're, that you're looking to pursue? 
Um, so yeah, I'm in my final semester of studying to be a radiographer. Um, so that's like x-rays and CT and MRI and all the sort of medical imaging um, that a lot of athletes probably get done during their career. Um, so I guess it's a pretty science-based course. Um, I don't know if you're interested in science and the human body and um, working with patients and if you sort of like a practical kind of job. Um, I think yeah. that's the people that would be suited to being a radio cop. Yeah, cool. Um, awesome. Well, Bronte, thank you so much for your time on that. I appreciate, really appreciate you sharing your, your thoughts and insights on that. It's um, been really interesting from, from my perspective and I'm sure there's some, some really good uh, lessons and um, points in there. But yeah, I no, really appreciate your time and uh, thanks very much. Thanks very much for contributing to our athlete stories. No worries. Thanks for chatting to me. No worries at all. Thanks.